Morning, Wiener. How you doing? It all the way. I want to get to my mom. It all the way. Mom? You're going to stay home, okay? You can't come to the human doctor. No, not even with that cute little tail away. You can try. Britt has a uh, prenatal appointment today. So we'll see what the doctor says today, if baby's coming early or if he's still coming in three days. Blood pressure's been pretty high, so they might bump it up. Let's see what see. he says. In the doctor's office. Just got her blood pressure taken. We're waiting for the doctor to come in now. Not good blood pressure. Not good at all. Yeah. Okay. Her blood pressure's been a little high through the third trimester, right? Yes. Just halfway through the third, so it's it's been like the last four weeks, four or five weeks or so. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's anything to be overly concerned about. That's what the no. doctors seem to think, but they're just keeping keeping a close eye on it. <laughs> They've tested me a few times for preeclampsia, and we're in the clear. So that's the big one. Just waiting for him to come in. Yeah, get the good word and he'll let us know if he's coming early or not yeah he'll probably still be on friday though i'm guessing i think so yeah i mean my diastolic isn't one 110 or over so i don't know i'm not a doctor or a nurse <laughs> so it looks like it's still gonna be friday and i'm really glad i opted for a c-section now <laughs> The doctor said he's never said this to an expectant mother and probably never will again, but because I have a scheduled C-section, he was okay with saying it. That's a big baby. He's a big one. We were not expecting this. I was a five pounder. I was three days late. He was a, well, almost seven pounds. He was 6'15". Like, how? How? So at the, uh, what was it? The one at St. Boniface, what's that called again? Fetal ultrasound. The fetal, fetal assessment. assessment. They, they told us then already, it looks like it could be seven pounds, six ounces, or you know between six and seven. Don't call our son an it. He. He. <laughs> At the fetal assessment, they told us, ago. yeah, a week ago already, they said that he could be up to seven pounds, six ounces, like between six and seven. That was a week ago. He's still getting chunkier. That's a big baby. He's a big boy. This pressure makes so much sense now. <laughs> My whining is officially justified. Oh, isn't that funny? Such a, a small, small lady. Yeah. Big baby. Big baby. Hey, Wiener, did you hold the fort? Were you good? I was still standing. I'm proud of you. Let's release the hounds. Oh, they acknowledged my existence. That was good. They looked. Nice to see you too, guys. I missed you too. Yeah, I missed you too. Yeah, I don't exist. Oh, Dad's here too. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. Mom! Yes, sing me the song of your people. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. So, what's the good word? We getting a budget today? A big one, but Friday still. He's a big baby, Diesel. He's a big baby. I knew it. <laughs> Wiener. Oh great. He's bigger than me, isn't he? <laughs> I know it.
Better not be your 14 pounds. Oh boy. I can't wait. I can't sure. wait. <laughs> Give me my brother. Shabber. So shabby. <laughs> What are you doing? You that excited? You don't need to bark. You don't need to bark. What you got? <laughs> Jake. <laughs> Falls for it every time. Every time. Hi, puppy. Okay. No, Shabby. You don't need to bark. He's really vocal today. Very excited to see you. Yeah, he's not. <laughs> Oh, with me, at least. You excited to see them, too? Off to the next thing. Seems we never stay home very, very long anymore. <laughs> Always stuff to do. She's got a... I got a pedicure. Got to get my toenail polish removed before the surgery, and I can't reach my toes. And it's gel, so I can't expect Josh to do the work to remove it, so... Yeah, so apparently you gotta take all of your nail polish, all of your toenail polish, everything off. Piercings. Piercings everything. for the surgery, or the C-section. So she's gonna go and take care of that and drop her off. And then Diesel has a vet appointment later on this afternoon we'll talk about in a little bit as well. Let's drop you off right here. Got her inside there, safe and sound. It's so icy right now. It's such a terrible season to, well, I shouldn't say it's a terrible season to be pregnant, but you gotta be very careful in this season if you're pregnant, you don't wanna slip and fall. So she's gonna go in there. I don't know how long her appointment's gonna be yet, but in a little while I have to take Diesel to the vet. So when I first got home from this trip, uh, Diesel had a little bit of a, it wasn't an accident. It was just a little bit of a, a little scuffle with a tree. So when I first got home, Diesel and Chevy were chasing each other around the backyard like crazy, right? And Diesel tried to cut the corner real close around a tree, but that tree had like an old stub of an old branch sticking out of it right around his level. And he went up against it and he nailed it with the, his side on his ribs and it pulled a whole section of hair out of his back. No blood, no cuts to the skin, but it was very painful for him. He was writhing around on the ground a little bit, kicking in the air, and I thought something really bad had happened, so I ran over to him and like picked him up. I was like, what's wrong, what's wrong? And uh, he ended up being okay, and he's not in any pain now. Uh, but now he's got a huge, what looks like a huge swelling bump underneath where that branch hit his ribs. And what's weird is that that only appeared and really swelled up a lot yesterday, which was 10 days after it happened. So it didn't swell up right away, it didn't swell up the next day. 10 days later, suddenly he's got this huge swelling bump on his side. I'll show you in a minute when we get home. So I, I, we called the vet yesterday, we made an appointment uh, for today, just to get that checked out. Like what in the world happened? Like he did something, I, we thought he was fine, and he just had some hair ripped out, but maybe it's just bruising that's swelling up, but it's like a hard lump under there. Better to just play it safe and bring him into the doctor and, and see what's going on. Poor guy's had a rough month. First of all, he had that limp, right? I wasn't home for that. We don't know why he was limping. Suddenly he was just fine. Okay. And now he's he hit that tree and he had his hair ripped out and that was painful. But then we thought, oh, he's just fine. He's acting fine. He's eating fine. He's playing around, running around just fine. And now he's got this huge, huge welt. I'll show you in just a second here. What, no greeting party for me? Wiener? Wiener? Oh. It's just you. It's not nearly exciting if it's just me. It's just me, guys. It's just me. Where's mom? What do you do with mom? Chevy, she'll be back soon, all right? I knew it. I knew it. Wait, mom. You can't yet know how we can get. Wait, dad. Dad, where's mom? What you doing, mom? So as you can see, Diesel's walking around and 
acting just fine, right? But I want to show you what I was talking about on his back. Tisa, can you come here? Can you come here in the light, please? Come here, bud. Chevy. Hey, bud. I want to show them diesel right now, okay? So you can see right there is where, uh, where he had his little accident, right? You can hardly see it now. It's sort of growing over a little bit. It's okay, Diesel. It's okay. I'm just showing them. See, he had this tuft of hair ripped off right there. And it was fine for 10 days. And now suddenly, right beside it, right here, look at that. There's this huge bump, and it's pretty hard to the touch. What's going on there, Diesel? What's that big bump? We're going to take you to the doctor right away. He's going to figure it all out. Okay? You're a good boy. Tough guy. If it hurts at all, you're doing a great job hiding that. I'm good, man. I'm a tough wee you. I'm a loy. Alright, Diesel. Let's go see the good doctor. Okay, I've got your lace here. This don't need that. Okay, you ready? The rest of you be good, okay? Let's go. I don't want to be late. All right, Diesel, you ready? You ready, guy? Let's go and see what the good doctor has to say. We got drugs. So it turns out that Diesel has a, uh, a pocket of fluid that's built up underneath his injury. Uh, it's a bunch of blood and fluid, a lot of blood that's like came out of the blood vessels, or the blood vessels broke, and it's sort of pooling up around there. It's nothing too big to be worried about, thank goodness. Uh, all I gotta do is I gotta warm compress it, so like a hot water bottle wrapped in a towel, hold it on there for five to ten minutes twice a day, and then he has an anti-inflammatory prescription here with a little bit of pain meds in it. Uh, I gotta give half a tablet by mouth with food every 24 hours for seven days. What's it actually called though? Uh, it's Duramax, D-E-R-A-M-A-X-X. Max. Yeah, looks like we're all in the clear. I think we're all. I think he's all good. He's a tough guy. He's a tough guy. But just, just to be sure, and there's no broken ribs or anything. So, good news. So now we got to go get Britt. She's done at her appointment, and then go home. It's always a busy day. Always. You're a tough guy, right, Diesel? Tough guy. He poked me. He poked me with a needle, and he took him on my blood, man. Where's your mom? I'm gonna go get her right now. Where's your mom? Mom will make it all better. Mom will keep you better. Now, I'm right here too, you know. I'm not the same. Should we go pick her up right now? Diesel. Should we go pick up mom? Yeah, should we go get her? Would she make it better? Moving slow, but Diesel, you'll make her feel better, right? Right? Mom! Mom! Mom, I got a needle. Mom! Mom, Diesel, you gotta stay in the back. Diesel, you gotta back up. How is she gonna get in? Go in the back. Go in the back, bud. Okay. Oh my god, a needle. You gotta eat. He took my blood. a needle. Mom. No. I need to kiss you better. Of course, I'll kiss it 20 times better. How was your appointment? Oh, my feet feel like a million bucks. Yeah. The rest of me, not so much, but that's okay. Great ladies, great services. I love sandals. Ugh. All right, let's go home. All right. And we're back again. Yikes. Oh my. Nice. Crazy dogs. Put that back up. Didn't damage my paint, did it? Good. How come when I come home and it's just me, you guys don't go nuts? Something about a mom. Hey buddy, how you feeling? Oh, it's so swollen. Were you a big brave puppy? Were you a big brave puppy? So brave. So brave. <laughs> yeah, Diesel, you weren't cowering in the corner at all, right? Right? <laughs> All right, let's uh, wait for mom to get out of here and we'll take you outside. Yeah, I just gotta get my phone, my water bottle, 
bottle. I'm out of your way. Okay. Okay, guys, let's go outside. Let's go outside, little guys. Outside. Let's go outside. You need to go out. Other way. Other way. Oh, the door's that way. I get it. Let's go outside. So good. So good. The trick is to savor it. Oh, it's one kernel at a time. Chevy, you done already? I've been done a while. Did you taste it? Diesel's always delicate when he eats. He likes to crunch each and every piece. Get the most out of your flavor that way, man. You gotta tell your brothers that trick. Everybody's done except for Diesel. So, a little update on Baby. Getting lots of Braxton Hicks. Had at least half a dozen today. And if family history is any indication, my mom always had them a day or two before she gave birth. So. So he's coming. And I mean, the doctor did say today that he is very ready from his positioning. So. Oh boy. Let's hope it uh, doesn't come early and we, we still get our scheduled C-section. So, if not, they'll fit me in, I'm sure. For those of you who don't know what Braxton Hicks are, what are Braxton? It's false labor. Okay. It's like your body's like preparing like practicing for actual labor i wish i could just tell my body like hey dude calm down it's all good we don't need this part it's fine <laughs> doctor's gonna do all the work but no this is part of it it's part of the process so i'm just getting like really 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 rock hard stomach like it, i can literally dock on it it's not right now it's not as firm as it was a couple it's minutes ago. It's still pretty rock hard. It's still pretty firm. And then like cramps going throughout my thighs and knees. So. <laughs> so lots of pains would feel like contractions. I assume I've never had contractions. So. This is our first baby so we're <laughs> learning. We're learning. Yeah. But your mom said that she had this same thing happen to her. Both times. Two a, days before. A day to two days. So. <laughs> Let's hope he holds out for two days. So it's Tuesday night right now. Sun's already gone down. So we just need him to hang in there another day and a half. Less than a day and a half. <laughs> well, if I didn't have a C-section, I have a gut feeling that he wouldn't have made it till Josh's birthday anyway. So. He's coming. He's coming. Very soon. Mm -hmm. We're ready for you, little guy. Hopefully they don't tell me I'm in labor tomorrow at my fetal assessment. Because then we got to have him in Winnipeg. I want to have him here at home. Well, was, not here at home, but... I was born in St. Boniface Hospital. I know, but our plan is to have him here. Yeah, we want to have Close to him. home. Nice and convenient. Keep yourself hydrated. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. So the actual due date... It was April 1st, which is a week longer than when the C-section will be. So the C-section is going to be you know, on Friday. He was due the following Saturday. Yeah. But now we're thinking he probably wouldn't have made it. I don't think so. No. To the due date, which is a good good thing that I'm home because we might be going to the hospital tonight yet. Who knows? Who knows? Might be tomorrow morning, might be middle of the night. Or well, he, might, he might make it all the way to the C-section. Friday morning, 7 a.m. Here's hoping. <laughs> yeah. So if you're wondering who's going to be watching the dogs while we're at the hospital, Britt's sister is coming down. Auntie Jazz. She loves the boys. The boys love her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's coming a day early, though, just to hopefully get them used to someone else kind of serving them dinner kind of deal. It's mostly for Diesel. <laughs> yeah, Diesel's... <sighs> He's very picky, and if he's not feeling right, and uh, if he's not feeling right, or if he's anxious, anxious at all in any way, he won't eat his meal. 
So hopefully I won't have to come back from the hospital. But I mean, we'll see. Yeah, at least at least giving birth here in Steinbeck, Josh has the option. It's you know, it's just a a little trip away, just a few minutes, and he can come back for meal times if he needs to. He'll have to come back here to shower and all that, anyways. So, yeah, Auntie Jazz is always there when we need something, especially regarding babies. She is very excited. Very excited. She is the most excited person out of anybody in our families, I think. She might be more excited than we are. She might be. Like, <laughs> I didn't think that was possible, but she's always there when we need her. Yeah. And there last time as well, too. Yeah, last time we lost a baby four and a half, five years ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, Josh couldn't be with me because he was in the middle of a trip, but he came back as soon as he could. But it still took him, I think, like a good three days or something yeah and uh, i had had a miscarriage and so my sister was there for me for my dnc and you know she fed me and she took care of the boys and yeah she's always there she's a great sister she's a good big sister that's part of the reason too why i took this time off to be here just in case he came early for a few weeks after as well because i felt awful about last time i was in wisconsin when everything happened and she had to go in for a DNC and that's, it was a pretty, uh, what would the word be invasive DNC. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't a great experience for you at all. And I wasn't there and I felt like I had failed, which in some ways I had, even though I had no choice, but to be out on the road, that's part of what we do, right? Nobody saw it coming. It, it just, it was one of those things nobody could have predicted. So it was just a, a bad situation, but thankfully I wasn't alone. And Mm -hmm. thankfully, Josh could get back to me a couple days later. This time, I'm here. For everything. Not going to miss a single thing. And it's going to be a happy turnout. Mm Mm-hmm. But, yeah, so the dogs will be taken care of while we're at the hospital. Yeah, they love that. have someone staying here. And that's why Jazz is coming uh, a day early as well, just to get Diesel, you know, a little bit more comfortable and less like anxious you know if we suddenly just leave the house and she's here with them alone and we don't come back for a couple of days he's not going to eat and he already may not because diesel doesn't like to eat without me Mm -hmm. so like sometimes josh can't feed him if i sleep in or something and josh tries to feed him breakfast in the morning and i'm not in the room diesel just won't eat yeah so he's a very fickle boy yep but they'll be well taken care of oh yeah of course So we have got everything covered, little guy. That's right. Everything. Everything. Hospital bags are packed. Everything. We're just waiting for you now. And Auntie Jazz says if you come early, just let her know and she'll be here. Mm -hmm. She told her worker, ready. My sister goes into labor. I got to take off. (laughs) (laughs) Frank, there might be a baby today. Might be tomorrow, but it'll definitely be... Here by Friday. By it, he means he. <laughs> yes, the baby. The baby. He. So, by the looks of it, it'll probably still be Friday, but I don't know. We don't know 100%. We might be getting up in the middle of the night tonight. And if we do, I'll update you when it happens. If not, I'll see you first thing tomorrow morning. Thanks for hanging out today, everybody, and we'll talk soon.